it. And this is not all oh, this is no, this is their second time. Probably yeah, maybe more. I don't even know. We're gonna find out right now. Let's bring him in. Joe Raymond. What's up, man? What's up, Pete? How are you? Not bad. Let me let me, let me turn this little let's music down here for you. <laughs> Sorry, I got really high off that dab, man. Took one of my filled a bunch of water, but um yeah, thanks. Uh thanks for having me on. And uh I know everyone's probably have, has seen the news that the attorney general, the put out a uh, cease and desist for Ibizar, um, uh beginning of the week. And uh, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to make it clear that the attorney general has no criminal authority over me in the state of Connecticut, that he has only civil authority. And furthermore, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, there's much greater problems that, that he should be representing the people on in this state than uh, a community of people that that gather and and you know get engaged in their community and work together to come up with different policy work and and do food drives and coat drives and toy drives and give thousands of dollars of school supplies to a town and get and are a private club not a public event you know and 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 why don't you explain to the the, the viewers because there's a lot of people here who are not from connecticut or even new england who might not know what high bazaar is let's give a quick rundown so these people know the original, high bazaar, the original high bazaar was was open to the public and anyone could go and you know we we had uh vendors at the time and the the town was okay with with the original high bazaar where it was uh, it was in a parking lot um as it grew uh traffic issues arose and you know we became quickly too big for uh the spot we were at and you know uh way to put it <laughs> to another you know and to another area after some of the neighbors there started you know taking legal action and such and then the second building wasn't zoned appropriately we ended up uh the building was right, but the, the road couldn't take, you know, the amount of traffic that was coming in. And we've never tried to, uh, you know, put anyone at danger or safety is always our number one concern, despite what a lot of people, the rumors, maybe people have heard. You know, there's been a lot of uh, misinformation put out there by people with big money interests, you know, a lot of people. Don't know even at the Crestway location there that I had fire officials walk through uh, off duty to make sure things were safe because I couldn't bring actual people in at that time because right. what we, they were trying to shut us down. And but safety has always been our number one concern, even at the bazaar where we had at Crestway that they say that there was gas under a stage. That was something made up by people to discredit us, make us look worse. Maybe the MSOs made it up. I'm starting to think they play a big part in well, yeah. I mean, you were like openly burning their merchandise outside of the venue. So, <laughs> but people don't mention that High Bazaar used to get, we used to stop High Bazaar every like half hour. I would make sure not only were we safe, but I would make sure everybody in the room was good. I would show them where the exits were. I mean, this is all forgotten. And, and everything now is like this big thing that he had got cans of gas under the, under the stage. And it's all made up. There was never that. There's never any truth to any of that. My safety has always been our number one concern. But seeing how the it ballooned with High Bazaar when it was public, we we recognized that. And when we brought it back for 4.0, you know, we wanted to make sure that it turned into based around the community to make it a private community to protect it with a public, with a private membership association and to vet our members coming in. And right. furthermore, to uh, make it one of our bylaws that everything we do within the walls of the bazaar is private. We don't speak about what goes on at the bazaar because we have the right to privately associate under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution as a private membership association. These are some of the things that will come into play when I go head when, when we, because the high bazaar is not just me, it's a whole community of people that, that, you know, love, you know, the community love buy into the community and, right you know you got a lot of support on instagram right now let me tell you i mean these people are coming all through time around, and second time around yes we charged at the door we we don't do that anymore i charge me and cody decided we charge a canned good 
as the membership fee for High Bazaar. We want to make this the ultimate private cannabis club for connoisseurs and community members alike that all felt engaged because we recognized all the mistakes that were made on High Bazaar 1.0, on High Bazaar 2.0. So when we got, you know, the spot at the Masonic Temple, right. Right away, we reached out to the Keefe Center. Right away, we reached out to the town. To <laughs> Damn, yo. I was just getting sucked into the story, too. Where'd my man go, yo? <laughs> and welcome to live TV. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I don't even, what, what do you, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> okay. I know everyone's can't leave us hanging now, right? I'm saying, like, what's happening here? <laughs> so this is trying to fast forward. I don't know if he's gonna jump back in, but I mean, the, the, they they were running at a at a at a, at a, at a private venue, and. Everything was running smooth. You guys got to understand, there's, there's probably like, I don't know, 10 different uh, events that run during this time. I mean, there's got to be at least 10 or a dozen different events like the High Bazaar that are running at the same time in Connecticut. Am I right? Um, I'm back. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I was just trying to fill in the gaps while you were gone. And I get to the point where I'm saying that you guys have been running at the Masonic Temple, the private event, but there's also a, probably a dozen other events that are running in Connecticut also, not just the High Bazaar. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and those events, and I don't think will, you know, and I hope will not be touched. I, I don't believe they will. I, you know, I'm, I've heard from some pretty credible sources that we were heavily lobbied to be taken out by the people i don't i would even name the company i'm trying to play a little bit fair but the company that's coming into keating ford as a dispensary out of chicago slap ash llc uh did lobby the attorney general william tong to remove us as a industry problem child and and before they start construction they just were approved for their zoning approval about a month ago so this we are within a mile of their dispensary location and believe me they know so, who Anna Warriors are. This sounds to me like now that you're saying that, like this is this this is like a personal hit. Like they're trying to take you out because he's opening his own dispensary. I would like to also mention that I have the support of the mayor. I have the support of of you know even uh, the the local police who give us the permit have said like have said, listen, if there's anything we could say because you guys have been good, you know, and and so we have the support i mean i'm gaining support of politicians who have secretly supported us for years and now we're going to come out and publicly support us because they can see that we're literally the the whole playbook that we gave them about msos what they do how they come in they're doing it you know it's and true it, though it's exactly you know, like exactly it i have the insight i've been here for 20 years in 2013 okay in the same town i was arrested for cultivation of cannabis I fought it because I knew that I was being that even though they caught me with it, that that the people, the cops that came in, that they had devised this like big lie to get in my house to get my weed and to arrest me. So I went to trial. I faced 62 years in trial, 42 appearances. 62 fucking years, yo. <laughs> 62 years, 42 appearances. Okay, two years of court cases. And we thought well, finally my lawyer threatened something called a Frank's hearing, which which weighs the validity of the warrants they used to get in the house. And you know, right when he started to mention a Frank's hearing, all of a sudden the state came to us and said, listen, we lost all the weed. We can't, we have to let them off the hook. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so what's your plan now, man? I mean, this sounds like they're, they're targeting you. If you try to run in Ham Hamden or the same town you're running in now, whatever it might be in that area, I'm who's to say that they're not gonna, gonna they're gonna not gonna do the same thing to you? I'm gonna say come and arrest me. I don't think there's anyone left to who's arresting out there right now for weed. I, I don't I don't even know. Like I was who was the last time somebody got arrested here for weed? Time, I mean, Biden just made a uh, Biden has been telling governors to release everybody i don't think he's going to be happy if he finds out that there are re-arresting the people that they were arresting 10 years ago there's got to be a way they got to figure this out and they're gonna have to 
it's going to end up, they're going to have to figure it out with me because I'm not going to back down. I don't care what all these other people say. These people were not in my position 10 years ago when these cops were knocking my door down. I get a lot of criticism from local people, okay, that, that have, that just got in the game. All right. I've been in this game for a long time. I live and breathe this game. That you have been doing this a long fucking time, man. A long fucking time. I remember one of your po- podcasts, you know, from the back of one of the original bazaars, you know. Dude, I, mean? I was at the first event. I think I was. It was the 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 legalization party we threw when it first Connecticut first legalized weed for recreational. You threw that big uh, event, and I broadcasted live there from that event. It was the first one this, you guys ever did before. It was even high bazaar. I understand. I've made some missteps. I'm a radical. And a lot of the stuff we do is very high stakes because we're trying to literally change things because they, it is, a, we've been at it for years with policy work, with direct action. Nothing works. We've tried everything. That's why I am now resulting and my people are resulting to these radical actions. And there are, we have huge critics that, oh, he calls the new, I never called the news, PZ. The original bazaar went on during COVID. The, the roads that was so busy were literally because nothing else was going on and people needed medicine. We were shutting the roads down in Hamden. So the news just showed up. I tried to redirect the news to our Wednesday meetings where we were teaching our community how to get. I remember the meetings. Yeah. Licensing. I wasn't trying to put anybody's, but I make missteps and I admit that. And I admit that there are, when you're dealing with, stuff and the AG coming at you and the state coming at you, things become high stakes sometimes, but know that you have to test these, these limits or these people will just continue to make us, you know, exist in this over-regulated market where we have no, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. So what can people do now then to help out? Like what can people do right now to, to help, you know, change things. I know you had, I saw a lot of posts from High Bazaar coming out about uh, like emailing or emailing the attorney general. Like what's, what's the plan right now? You know, right now is to support each other. Like there's so much fighting that goes on within the legacy market and black market. We all need to understand that we are not each other's enemies. The enemies are right now are the regulators who are, uh, who are over-regulating the market and the multi-state operators including Cureleaf and, and Theraplant, all of them that are, you know, sinking fast, have held a market up with hot dog water distillate for years and don't want c- small craft grown great cannabis to enter the market or enter anywhere. And it's not even right. just, you know, and they are, dev- you know, we need to unite against them and, and just keep, they can't arrest for it. Biden's I know. Telling they're telling them right now online. I got I got people on Instagram talking about uh, like people are being arrested to this day, but cases are being dropped. I've heard, uh, you know, that I don't think anybody wants to arrest for it anymore. So right. really, I'm gonna say to Tong, cuff me. Cuff, that's it. Just cuff. <laughs> I'm in cuff and you arrest me. Here you go. <laughs> you were arresting me 10 years for it now. Now it's legal, and I'm still doing it, and you're still now you're you can't arrest me, so you're gonna do what? You're gonna make believe you can arrest me and tell people you're gonna explore arresting me if I keep doing what I've already been doing. Damn, man. So where can people find out or stay up more to find out like what follow the story and find out what's going on with High Bazaar? What how, how can they uh, keep up with you? Social media, Instagram? Uh, on Instagram, and then support your local 710 is me personally. Uh, you know, you I would get involved with the CT Cannon Warriors on Facebook. There's a Facebook group where we do a lot of advocacy work. Uh, you know, I also founded the New England Craft Cannabis Alliance, which gives resources to grassroots advocacy and to legacy market operators. Uh, we have a page on Facebook as well. But my the most important thing for people to know is this. Get involved with your local municipality. Get involved with your politics. Get involved with your community. Let them know, you know what I mean? What right. That you are a part of the community, that you have existed there already. You were an existing part of the community before. And that where is your space now post-legalization? Because they're not giving it. They're giving it to people by signing up with corporate overlords that give them a paycheck. There's no, then you lose your creative 
you know, your create your ability to have creativity in the market, or it's just crazy. This right. should this market should be built from the smallest player up. There, you shouldn't. They shouldn't be worrying about how to how they're going to license and 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 permit fifteen thousand square foot canopies. They should be worrying about twenty by twenty rooms. I mean, there's no mold. We're you know, involved when you're working in a 20 by 20 controlled environment, like this needs to get back to basics, man. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I really do. I do. It's all about the small crap grows in my opinion, though. I'm, I'm all right. about that life. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, listen, Joe, I appreciate you coming on, man. We'll have to talk more about this. because We can talk about this for hours, yo. The, you know, we'll have to do a little special on this for sure. So I'll keep up. Well, maybe we'll do a little IG live and talk more about this in a, in a little bit. Be good, brother. <laughs> Hot dog water distillate. <laughs> to be blunt, listen, we got to take a quick break. When we be back, De La Stoner, don't go nowhere. It's the highest show around, is it?